So let's talk about the value and also type. So date value. So value is a one of the basic units of the data. For example, the numbers, the strings that uh, are all type of the values that the, the program can manipulate. And the type is just the categorical of the value. So date type are categorical of the values. So different categories of the values. So for example, we have integers, okay? So those are the whole numbers, and we have the float. Those are the numbers with decimals. And we also have a strings, so that is another type of the value. So those are just like the text. Okay, so those three types of the data. And integers is INT, uh, floating point, float, and also STR stand for strings. And in Python, if you want to check the data type of a specific value, and you can use this built-in function. So this function is a built-in function that is already built in Python, so that is called type. So you can use type parentheses, and you put the data that within this parentheses, and this function will return the type of that data. Okay, uh, so let's try it. So let's say uh, print, so we want to get a result of that function. And within this parentheses, let's type type. Okay, so this is a built-in function. And within this type, let's type one, two, three. Okay, so one, two, three is a, is a number, so it's a whole number. So that means the type function will check the date type of the one, two, three and it should be integer. So let's try it. And you can see it is an integer. And if we put the decimals, so let's say point or period here. So even there's no values after the decimal, so it is not become a float because this number contains decimal. So now let's run it. Okay, and you can see it is a float. And if we put that one into a pair of the quotation mark, so that is a way that we can define a string. Okay, so if we put that into a pair of the quotation mark, and now if we run it, and now you can see it is string. So the date type is a string. Okay, so the basic date type. Uh, so we have strings, so we just mentioned earlier. So strings, just those words that we, uh, like we speak. Uh, and we have numbers. So in number, there are two data types. We have integer and we have float. So integer means that, so the number only contains the integer part. So there are no, decim there are no uh, values that are behind the decimal. And float means that we do have the decimal part, so that we do have the value that behind the decimals. And in Python, if we want to define a string, actually we just saw that. So if we want to define, string is just a series of the characters. If we want to define a string, we can use a pair of the single quotation mark or a pair of the double quotation double quotation mark. So it doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, the strings can contain numbers, letters, and also symbols. Okay, so for example, if you define string like this A, that will be a string. And if you define like as number one, so that is also a string. And if you say define a symbols, add symbol, okay, so that is also a string. Uh, so if, when you define strings, so if the first one is a single quotation mark, and then the closing uh, mark should also be a single quotation mark. So you cannot define a string like this. So you start with a single quotation mark or double quotation mark, and followed by a single quotation mark. So that is not allowed. Okay, so you can a pair of either single quotation or double quotation. So if you define a string with a double quotation mark, so for example here, and the single quotation mark within this pair of the, within this string will be considered symbols. 
Okay, so we are considered symbols. So for example, if you print double quotation mark, okay, Tom's cat, okay, and the output will be the Tom's cat, okay. So that's the way that if you want to have a single quotation mark in your string. Okay, so let's try that. So let's put that one into comment. Let's say print. Let's use a, a pair of the single quotation marks. So hello world. So here we just defined a string. And now if we print, okay, we have hello world. And if we are using the double quotation mark, okay, and it is also hello world, that is also a string. However, so if you mix, use those quotation marks, for example, if I start with a double quotation and close with a single quotation mark, and now you can see I have an error, okay? Um, so if I write, so now you see we have an error, okay? They tell you that the error is in line nine, so that is line nine, and exactly at this place, an error is a syntax error. Okay, so let's fix that error and run it. Okay, so now we are good. And if we want to put print out a single quotation mark or double quotation mark, so the way to do that is we can define, declare, let's say, a string by using a double quotation mark. It's our second Python class. Okay, so we define declare the string by using a pair of the double quotation mark. Within that string, we use single quotation mark as a symbol. So now if you run it, so now you can see, in this case, the single quotation mark is considered a symbol. And we can also do that in the same way, so in the opposite way. So for example, here, if we declare the string with single quotation mark, and within that string, the double quotation mark will be a symbol, will be considered a symbol. Okay. A uh, string also have some, has some methods. So method is an action that can perform on a piece of data. So string is a one type of the data, so it also has some built-in uh, method. Uh, to call the method, we use dot. So dot can tell Python to make a method act on that variable. So for example, we have a string A, and we call it dot. So dot means tell Python, OK, so follow after dot, we will call that method. And the method is also followed by a parenthesis, OK, to create, uh, to take more information. So for example, those common methods is for example, upper and also lower. So if you want to call the upper method, so dot upper and the parenthesis. OK, so that will change the string into upper cases. And if I use lower, so that will change the string into lower cases. And the parenthesis is used to take more information. So for this for this upper method and also lower method, they, they don't take any information. So we don't need to define anything within this uh, parenthesis. We can also we also have the strip method so that can cut the spaces on the both side of the string okay uh, so for example if we have a string that has spaces okay and by using this strip uh, method we will have all these string that we can cut all the space that's around this string we can also use split method so split method will take information that in this premises so Split method will retain a list. Okay, we'll talk about lists later that are split based on whatever you defined within this premises. Okay, so we also it's called a delimiter. So for example, we say we have a string a comma b. Okay, 
and we see dot split. Okay, parentheses. If we want split based on this comma, so it will retain a list that has A, that is the first item, and also B, that is the second item. So that will separate the stream based on whatever we define here. And lastly, we can also use add function, add calculation, so that we can use stream plus a stream, so that just simply create another stream. So for example, if we use A, string A plus string B, we all have a new string that is A and B. Okay, so that those are the most common methods that within a stream. Okay, so let's try those methods here. So let's put this one into a, a comment. So let's say, uh, let's say print, okay, uh, hello word. So here H is capitalized and the W is capitalized. And if we print that, we can say we have hello word. And let's try the upper method. So let's say dot upper. And you can see when you tap U, so um, the editor is very smart that know that you are you, you probably is calling the upper method. So if you tap U and just tap enter, it will be automatically automatic automatically completed. Uh, so now let's write. Now you can see all the words now change to the upper cases. And let's let's try lower. Okay, and now you can see all the words now are translated into lower cases. Okay, uh, let's try the strip. So let's say we type some space that around this string. Now let's print. You can see here in this output, so we do have spaces that uh, on both sides of this string. So if we want to cut those spaces, we can call the strip function. So strip and write. So now you can see now the spaces are gone. So the space has been cut um, by you in this strip function. All right, so let's try the split. So let's see. Um, Let's say we, we we write comma. Okay, so we print hello world, hello dot word. So here we have a single string. So for example, if we want to split this string based on the comma, so what we can do is that we can dot split, and this method uh, will take information. So let's see. Uh, the input still in the string, so we want split based on this comma, and now let's write. So you can see now it can retains a list. Okay, so we will talk list later. So list that the first item is hello, the second item is space word. Okay, so if we want say if we want split based on space. So now you can see the first item is hello comma. The second item is word. Okay, space is gone. And if we want split based on, let's see, O, the letter O. So now you can see we have one letter O, two letter O. So now if we write. So now you can see this string has been split into uh, a first part, H-E-L-L. Uh, the second part is just a comma. The third part, uh, sorry, the, the second part is this one, comma space W. Okay, so comma space W. The third part is RLD, RLD. Okay, so that is a split function. And finally, let's say, let's try the plus. So let's say we have a hello plus word. Okay, space word. Okay, so let's say we, we here we have a first string that is hello plus 
The second is space word. So I say what is output. Okay, you can see it's very nice. It's hello world. Okay, so it's a single string. 